The history of Qatar from 1507 to 1913. I paid a visit to the National Museum of Qatar and used my phone to photograph all of the information panels from 1507 to 1913. What follows is all 40 of those information panels so that when you visit the museum, you will be primed and ready to enjoy the experience even more. Starting with 1507, the beginning of Portuguese control of the Gulf. Following their successful navigation of the Cape of Good Hope, the Portuguese gradually took control of the Red Sea and Arabian Gulf. They captured commercial centers, including Hermuz, a wealthy kingdom that controlled shipping from the entrance of the Gulf to Basra, and was a major port for ships coming from China and India. The Portuguese later seized Bahrain, al assa and Katif. They imposed heavy taxes on the pearl trade and confiscated or burnt tax-free ships to maintain their monopoly over the region. 1546, beginning of Portuguese and Ottoman conflict in the Gulf. The Ottomans wanted to take control of the Gulf from the Portuguese. They took the port of Basra from the Safavids, a dynasty based on the northern coast of the Gulf, and established a huge naval fleet against the Portuguese. At the time, the Portuguese monopolized trade routes from Asia to Europe. The Ottoman fleet managed to extend Ottoman control to al assa and the Qatar Peninsula, and limited Portuguese expansion in the Gulf. 1600 – British East India Company established the Portuguese and Spanish controlled trade between Asia and Europe for many decades. In 1588, the British destroyed the Spanish fleet and emerged as a global naval power. They wanted to take control of trade in the Indian Ocean region. So, in 1600, Queen Elizabeth I of England granted a royal charter to a group of London merchants to establish the British East India Company. The company had a monopoly on British trade in Asia and the Pacific. It would grow from a trading company to a commercial, political and military power that represented British interests across the region. 1622 – British Safavid Alliance takes control of Hurmuz The British East India Company wanted to take control of the profitable Persian silk trade from the Portuguese. In 1622, the British allied with the Safavid Empire, based on the northern coast of the Gulf, against the Portuguese. Together, they seized Hermuz and expelled the Portuguese from the city. The Portuguese retreated to Muscat and formed an alliance with the Ottomans. They fought back against the Safavids and took control of the pearl trade through Jalfar, Muscat, Basra and the Qatar Peninsula. 1627 to 1628, Portuguese forces attack Qatari coast. The Portuguese fleet raided the Qatar coast multiple times between 1627 and 1628. They forced the Qataris to sell their pearls through Katif, which was controlled by their Ottoman allies, rather than through Safavid-controlled Bahrain. Historians believe the main targets of the attacks were Albida, Huela and al Khor. Following the attacks, people fled north and established new settlements at al Yusufia, Faria, and al Zubara. 1650 to 1670, Portuguese and Ottomans abandoned the Arabian Gulf. The late 1600s saw a gradual increase in the power of Gulf Arabs. In the mid-1600s, the Yaruba of Oman liberated Muscat and expelled the Portuguese, regaining control of Portuguese centres around the region. The Kawaled took back control of al assa from the Ottomans, but managed to maintain a good relationship with them. The Kawaled established alliances with local sheikhs from Basra to Qatar. Huwelia in Qatar sent its annual tribute to al assa 1775 to 1780, Basra destroyed, Al Zubara flourishes. Basra was once the hub of the pearling industry in the Arabian Gulf. However, it was besieged by the Persians in 1775 and then struck by a plague. 
Many important merchant families moved to Al Zubara in northwestern Qatar, including Al Rizq, who played a key role in Al Zubara's development. At the same time, tribes moved to Qatar from the interior of the Arabian Peninsula, including Al Utub, Al Jalahima, and Al Bin Ali. By 1780, Al Zubara was one of the most important and prosperous cities in the Gulf, thanks to the trade in Arabian horses and pearls. Due to its success, it became a target for attacks. 1783, Battle of Nazor and Conquest of Bahrain. Al Zubara's prosperity affected trade in Bahrain, which led to a dispute. Nasser al Mathkur, who controlled Bahrain on behalf of the Safavid Empire, launched an attack on Al Zubara. The siege of the town became known as the Battle of Nasur, taken from the name Nasser. The people of Qatar, together with the Al Khalifa, the rulers of the town, broke the siege and fought back. They then took control of Bahrain on the 28th of July, 1783. 1783, Rahma bin Jabbar moves to Khor Hassan. Rahma bin Jabbar lived in Al Zubara. He supported his cousins, Al Khalifa, in the conquest of Bahrain and lost an eye in the battle. Al Khalifa did not give him his share of the spoils from the battle, and a dispute arose between them. Rahma left Al Zubara and moved to Khor Hassan in northern Qatar. There he established a base and continued his fight against Al Khalifa. 1797 First Saudi State Seizes Al Zubara. Al Zubara's prosperity, strategic location, and rich resources attracted the attention of the First Saudi State, which launched several attacks against Qatar between 1791 and 1796. They seized Al Zubara in 1797, and many Qataris were forced to flee to neighboring areas. By 1802, the first Saudi state had taken control of the entire Al Asa region, Qatar, and Bahrain. 1809, Rahma bin Jabbar moves to Dammam. Rahma bin Jabbar allied with the Imam of the first Saudi state after they took Al Zubara. Rahma was appointed as ruler of Dammam in today's eastern province of Saudi Arabia. He moved to the city and built a fort there. 1811 Al Zubara destroyed. The first Saudi state's control over Al Zubara led many merchants to move away, and so the city's commercial significance declined. In 1811, the forces of the Imam of Muscat attacked and destroyed Al Zubara as part of an ongoing war between Muscat and the First Saudi State. The forces of the First Saudi State withdrew from Al Zubara to face the troops of Muhammad Ali Pasha, an Ottoman commander in western Saudi Arabia. 1818 First Saudi State falls. The rise of the first Saudi state threatened Ottoman sovereignty in the Arabian Peninsula. The Ottoman Sultan instructed his wali, governor, in Egypt, Muhammad Ali Pasha, to campaign against them. Muhammad Ali Pasha's attacks between 1812 and 1818 weakened the first Saudi state, destroying its capital at al Duriya and forcing it to give up control over al Asha and the Gulf. The fall of the first Saudi state enabled al Khalifa to take back control of Bahrain, Qatar, and Katif. 1820 – British influence in the Gulf grows In 1820, the British monopoly on trade in the Arabian Gulf shifted from economic influence to political control. The British made a group of Arab leaders sign the General Maritime Treaty. It aimed to achieve maritime peace to protect British interests from local conflicts, with little concern for inland peace. Although the sheikhs of Qatar refused to sign it, the British believed that Qatar was controlled by Bahrain, who had agreed to the treaty. 
1821, Albida becomes the largest town in Qatar. After the destruction of Al Zubara, Albida became the largest and most important town in Qatar. However, in 1821, the town was bombarded by the British ship Vestal as punishment for a perceived breach of the General Maritime Treaty, despite the fact Qatar had not agreed to it. 1823. British Complete Survey of Qatar's Coast British naval officers completed the first survey of Qatar's coast in 1823. The survey provided the first detailed information about Qatari coastal towns, features and water depths to aid navigation. In the same year, Captain John MacLeod became the first British political resident in the Gulf to visit Albida. 1826. Rahma bin Jabba dies in battle. The British were keen to maintain the maritime peace. They made Rahma bin Jabba sign a peace agreement with the ruler of Bahrain in 1824. The agreement aimed to stabilise the region, but Rahma continued to attack Bahraini ships. This led to a naval battle in 1826 near the coast of Damam, during which Rama was killed. His life and death became legendary, and today the people of the Gulf still tell stories of his exploits. 1835 Siege of Huela, Isa bin Tarif leaves Qatar. After the death of Rahma bin Jabir, another prominent figure in Qatari history emerged. Isa bin Tarif, the leader of Al bin Ali tribe, tried to govern Huela independently after gaining the support of the second Saudi state and Oman. However, the ruler of Bahrain besieged Huela. Isa asked the Iman of Muscat to break the siege at Huela in return for Isa's support of Muscat's siege of Mombasa. 1843 Isa bin Tarif becomes ruler of Doha. Isa bin Tarif returned to Qatar and became ruler of Doha, the neighbouring town to Albida. Doha was an important pearling hub, and he built walls and towers to protect the town from attack by Bahraini rulers. 1847 Battle of Um Suweha The First Destruction of Doha Isa bin Tarif ultimately lost his life trying to achieve independence for Doha. Despite the support of some Qatari tribes, he was killed at the Battle of Um Suweya against Bahraini forces. The battle is also known as the first destruction of Doha because the people of Doha were forced to leave their homes. After the death of Isa, Al Khalifa began collecting the tribute of Qatar. 1848 Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani moves to Doha. Mohammed bin Tani and his allies moved from Fuerat to Doha because of its importance in the pearling trade, and because the former ruler of Doha, Isa bin Tarif, had been killed at the Battle of Um Suwaya the previous year. Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani lived near the Souk of Doha, which was the main center for buying and selling pearls. 1851 Battle of Mezamir the second Saudi state, led by Iman Faisal bin Turki, invaded the Qatar Peninsula. Saudi and Qatar forces skirmished at Mezamir, and a horseman from Doha was killed. Sheikh Jassim killed the attacker and his horse with a single spear. This marked the start of Sheikh Jassim's rise to prominence. The Qataris, led by Sheikh Mohammed, then allied with Faisal bin Turki against Bahrain, whose rulers were collecting tribute for Faisal bin Turki, but not sending it to him. The alliance provoked Bahrain's rulers, who joined with Abu Dhabi to besiege Qatar. However, they feared the growing Qatari-Saudi alliance and backed down, paying tribute to Faisal bin Turki and allowing Sheikh Mohammed to collect Qatar's tribute. 1867 al wakra Incidents Tensions between Qatar and the rulers of Bahrain continued for many years, as Bahrain continued to try and control Qatar. 
In 1867, the people of Wakra, supported by Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani, attacked the deputy governor of Bahrain and forced him out of al Wakra. 1867, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani captured. The ruler of Bahrain sent an invitation to Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani, urging him to continue his yearly visits to Bahrain despite the ongoing conflict. When Sheikh Jassim went to Bahrain, he was captured and imprisoned. This incident was documented in poetry written by Sheikh Jassim. 1867, the second destruction of Doha. After Bahrain captured Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani, they wanted to demonstrate their strength in Qatar. The ruler of Bahrain, supported by the ruler of Abu Dhabi, destroyed Doha and Al Wakra in 1867. 1867, Battle of Damsa. All the Qatari tribes rallied in a campaign to liberate Sheikh Jassim bin Muhammad bin Tani. A bloody battle took place against the Bahraini forces. The Qataris were defeated and many were killed. 1868, Battle of Jabal Wakra. Following their defeat at the Battle of Damsa, the Qataris withdrew. The Bahrainis pursued them to Al Wakra. Here, the Qataris made a stand, surrounding the Bahraini forces and capturing two leaders. After the battle, both sides agreed to an exchange of prisoners, and Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani returned to Doha. Despite the cruelty of these events, they brought the people of Qatar together and paved the way for Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani's future leadership. 1868 Agreement of 12 September The ongoing conflict between Qatar and Bahrain angered British authorities in the Gulf. In 1868, the British punished the ruler of Bahrain for destabilizing the region and fined Bahrain and Qatar. On 12 September of the same year, Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani signed an agreement with the British political resident in the presence of several Qatari sheikhs. This agreement was the first official interaction between Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani, the Sheikh of Qatar, and the British authorities. 1871 Ottoman forces enter Qatar Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani and his son Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani called on the Ottomans to help defend Qatar against the political changes resulting from the decline of the second Saudi state. Around 1,000 Ottoman soldiers were then sent to Qatar. Later the same year, most of the troops departed, leaving a small garrison of around 30 soldiers as a symbol of Ottoman sovereignty in Qatar. 1872, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani appointed Kaim Makam. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani was appointed as an honorary Ottoman Kaim Makam, district administrator as part of an attempt to organize the Ottoman administration in the region. This title allowed Sheikh Jassim to continue his usual responsibilities during the reign of his father, including collecting tributes. In 1876, he was officially appointed as Kaim Makam. 1878, death of Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani. Sheikh Mohammed bin Tani passed away in Doha. He was succeeded by his son, Qatar's founder, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani. 1878 Al Udaid Dispute In 1878, a dispute arose between the ruler of Abu Dhabi and the people living in Al Udaid, southern Qatar. The tribe refused to pay taxes to their sheikh as they considered themselves subjects of the Ottoman government in Qatar not subjects of Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi's sheikh attacked and captured al Udaid, and its people fled to Doha. The British authorities did not support the Qataris as they did not want Ottoman control to extend to al Udaid. 1880-1886 dispute between Qatar and Abu Dhabi develops. Although Sheikh Zayed's forces withdrew from al Udaid, tensions continued 
Some Qatari tribes attacked Abu Dhabi in response to the destruction of Al Udaid. The British supported Abu Dhabi, but the Ottomans were reluctant to assist the Qataris. As a result, Sheikh Jassim made an agreement with Sheikh Zayed in 1882 to protect the Qatari people. There was an uneasy peace for a few years before the dispute resurfaced between 1885 and 1886. 1887, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani resigns as Kaim Makam. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani resigned as Kaim Makam in opposition to Ottoman reforms, including taxes on the Qataris. He was also motivated by the Ottoman Empire's failure to assist him in the case of Al Udaid, or against the British government who had interfered in Sheikh Jassim's decision to close the shops of British Indian traders who did not comply with Qatar's customs and laws. However, his resignation was rejected. 1888, Al Zubara rebuilt. The Ottoman authorities were eager to please Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani to ensure his allegiance. They awarded him the title Kapuji Bashi to recognize his efforts in supporting the Ottoman Empire and supported his idea of rebuilding Al Zubara. 1888, Abu Dhabi attacks Qatar. Sheikh Joan killed. The dispute between Qatar and Abu Dhabi over Al Udaid continued. In May, Abu Dhabi attacked Al Bida. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani's son, Ali bin Jassim, known as Joan, was killed along with several other Qataris while attempting to defend Al Bida. 1889, Battle of Kanur. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani raided Abu Dhabi, attacking Liwa and Kanur to avenge the death of his son and the other Qatari fighters. In response, the leader of Abu Dhabi campaigned extensively against Qatar with the support of neighboring sheikhs. However, Sheikh Jassim had secured Doha with fortifications and towers, which prevented Sheikh Zayed from besieging the city. 1893, Battle of Wajba. In October 1889, the Ottoman Empire decided to remove Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani as Kaim Makam, after his opposition to Ottoman reforms and taxes. In February 1893, the Ottoman governor of Basra arrived at Al Bida with his forces. Sheikh Jassim sent his brother Sheikh Ahmed and other envoys to negotiate. The governor of Basra captured the envoys and advanced to Al Wajba in pursuit of Sheikh Jassim. Sheikh Jassim's forces were victorious. After the battle, the Ottoman Sultan blamed the governor of Basra for the dispute and removed him from his position. Sheikh Jassim and the Ottomans reconciled. 1895 British ships bombard Al Zubara. On 7 September 1895, British ships bombarded Al Zubara to prevent it from falling under Ottoman control. The attack came after Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani allowed one of his tribes to live there and plans had begun to rebuild the city. The attack proved to Sheikh Jassim that the Ottomans could no longer protect the Qatari people. He retired to Al Dayan, passing responsibility for handling the Ottoman officials to his brother, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed, and his son, Sheikh Abdullah bin Jassim al Tani. 1913 Anglo Ottoman Convention and Death of Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani. By 1913, Ottoman power had weakened, and the British and Ottoman governments signed an agreement for the Ottomans to withdraw from Qatar and abandon their claims to sovereignty. The agreement also defined the borders between Qatar and Najd province. In the same year, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani passed away and was succeeded by his son, Sheikh Abdullah bin Jassim al-Tani.